to tell if a number I give you is divisible by three? Um, all the numbers add up to a multiple of three. Good. Now somebody else tell me what other number has a similar rule. Nine. 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 Beautiful. What number is kind of built on that, but has something else like six? So six is two and three. So if a number is going to be divisible by six, it must be divisible by two and by three, correct? This is such a beautiful idea. So the rule for two must work and the rule for three must work. If they both work, then six goes into it. You guys with me? And this is where I came up, I, I told you guys about the idea of relatively prime. Yeah. Does anyone remember what the idea of relatively prime was? Are two and three, well, two and three are both prime, so of course they're relatively prime. Are eight and 15 relatively prime? Yes. Yes, because eight is made up of twos, two, 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 and 15 is made up of three and five. Do they share any factors? So that's what relatively prime is. Eight or 15 are either one of those prime numbers. Eight, 15 are either one of those prime. Why? Something yeah, because something goes into making them. They're composed of, which is why we call the opposite of prime composite. So 8 is composed of more than just 1 and 8. It's composed of 4 and 2. 15 is composed of more than just 1 and 15. It's composed of 3 and 5. Kick okay, ass. You guys with me? So neither one of them are prime, but they are relatively prime with each other. They don't share anything with each other. So 8 and 15 are what's known as relatively prime. They'll never touch. Yeah. They'll never, they don't share anything. Right? What about 6 and 15? Are they relatively prime? No. No. They share, they share three. three. They share three. Look at that. In stereo. Kick ass. You guys all with me. That helps because something very nice came up. I think somebody brought this up, which is kind of beautiful. Uh, if 6 depends on 2 and 3's rules, could I do that with like 12? 12 would depend on the rule for 3 and 4. Does, would that work? Yes, because 3 and 4 are relatively prime. You guys with me? You guys with me? Yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, what, was, what was, so the 8 rule would be any All right, here's the 8. We four. haven't talked about the 8 yet. Talked so about what's seven? the rule? I haven't talked about the rest of them yet. So the rule for 3 and 9, they have to add up to a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 9. Six is built off of, they must be even, and they have to add up to be a multiple of three, correct? You guys all with me? Can you guys really quickly, right now, create a number, uh, more than three digit number that's divisible by six? Just create it, don't use a calculator or anything. Now, of course, the easy one would be six, 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 but uh, it would be a little more creative. Wait, wait. I want to, I want, let's make it a four digit number. Four digit number divisible by six. So what's gotta be true? It's gotta be what kind of number? Even. Even, so that two goes in, and all the digits have to add to be three thousand six. A multiple of three. Say again. Three thousand six. Alright, so three thousand six works. Using a lot of zeros is a good idea. Right? Because then you got less stuff to have to worry about. So that's smart. So it's even. So if I was going to make one up, I would start with the last number. So I know it's going to be even, correct? Yeah. Then if I need four digits, I can make two of them up without thinking. You guys kind of with me? Mm -hmm. And now I got to go, okay, what do I got? Six, 14. So I got to add one. So it's 15. So now it's even and three will go in. Do you guys kind of follow what I just did? Is the specific thing I just did really important? No, <laughs> right? But the logic I used, I started the last number, so I knew it was going to be even. I can make two of them up, whatever the shit I want to, because then the last number is what's going to save my ass. I don't know if you guys are really with me. So if I make the last number four, is it going to be even? Yes. Yeah. Somebody give me any number between zero and nine. Uh, four, zero and nine. I mean, uh, four. three and two. Four and two. Sure, I'll take some from each of you. Right? What does that add up to be? Six. Ten. Ten. So what do I have to add to make it a multiple of three? There's a couple of answers. 
I can, I can add two, I can add five, I can add eight, right? You guys see what I'm saying? The last number I put will make it work. Anyway, that's, I don't know why I'm spending so much time with that. That's so unimportant, but that's a nifty idea. You can construct a number that will do something. Okay. Um, what about the rule for four? What's the rule for four? Anybody else? Sorry, I know. Yes. The last two digits are divisible by four. Can somebody else tell me why that's true? Because, because if four only goes into ten twice, so anything other would be the opposite. Here's the trick. Does four go into? It's something with the something with one hundred. Yeah, four goes into a hundred. Everybody with me? Four of what's is a hundred cents. Four quarters. So four times twenty-five is hundred. So if four goes into a hundred. Right. Four goes into a hundred. That means it goes into a hundred and twelve. For example, are you with me? If it goes into a hundred and twelve, it goes into a hundred and twelve. Everybody with me? Just like it will go into a hundred and four. Yeah, totally. One hundred four, one hundred eight, one hundred twelve. Then it's going to go into two hundred. So it'll go into 204. So it'll go on 104, blah, blah, blah. It'll go 204, blah, blah, blah. Well, if it goes into 100, it goes into 1,000, correct? Because that's just 10 times. So as long as the last two digits are divisible by four, the whole thing is. So I really want this to make sense. So if I have the number, um, you can do a jump. Four, three, five, seven, six, one, nine, eight, zero. The last two digits are divisible by four, correct? Yes. So 80 is divisible by four. Four, three, five, seven, six, one, nine, zero, zero. Is that a multiple of 100? Yeah. Totally. And four goes into 100. So four goes into any multiple of 100. So that's why I can just focus on the last two digits. If four goes into that, and four goes into this, because it goes into 100, it goes into the whole thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So it would be really cool if you understood why the rule for four works. But at the very least, you have to know the rule for four. Okay. Uh, five. Easy. Not even talk. Six. We already talked about. Seven. Somebody requested it, and I'm not going to do it. I haven't looked it up on here. I'm not going to spend time on seven. Sorry. It's a weird ass thing. You can look it up if you want to. You can leave your friends on. Eight. eight. So we haven't talked about eight yet. Um, oh, that's neat. Okay. Easily amused, sorry. Um, four goes into a hundred. Eight goes into a thousand. Which is trippy. So therefore, this rule sucks a bit. Because the rule is, if the last three digits are divisible by eight, then the whole thing is divisible by eight. But some three-digit numbers, it's not immediately obvious they're divisible by eight. You guys understand? So for example, uh, 336, is that divisible by eight? Can you tell just by looking at it? But it is divisible by eight. So therefore, one one nine seven two six three four three three six. That's divisible by eight. So the rule <coughs> for eight kind of sucks. All right. And somebody already came up with kind of an adjustment to it. I love it, but I'm not going to talk much more about. It. Normally, when I give you a rule for eight, I'm going to give you one that's a little more, uh, you know, obvious. Eight sixteen. Right? Is that divisible by eight? Totally. So is the whole thing divisible by eight? Hell yeah. Okay. Let me stop for a minute. So it kind of makes sense that four and eight have very similar rules, just like three and nine have very similar rules because they multiply and become each other. All right, and then nine, of course, we talked about already. So is everybody with me? Okay. So. Um, the other thing we talked about, I use this notation here. Can somebody remind me what that notation means? 
Again? Yeah, it, it divides into. So like if I say A divides, so A divides B, meaning B is some multiple of A. Okay, so if I say, uh, is this true? Yeah, because yeah, 3 divides 12. 3 goes into 12. Yeah. So you can even think of this as saying goes into. Or we just say divides. Just even though, right? Evenly, of course, yeah, 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 exactly. Because if I ask you, does 7 divide 25? No, of course not. So we already know it inherently means evenly. Yeah, okay. I like it. I'm trying to make sure I get you to a point where you can do this worksheet. Yeah. And the other thing we talked about, oh, the really kind of nifty thing, I think I got to a point where most of you agree it was nifty. Um, Kind of two things, but one of them was something I told you. I don't think the book talks about it. Um, if I have, here, remind me, how do I make a prime factor tree for 68? 68 divided by 2. Yeah, so I'm going to do 2 times 34. Two times, two times, two times 17. 17. Is 17 prime? Yeah. Uh, yes. Totally. So, real quick, how do I write this most compactly? 2 times 2 times 17 would be 2 squared, squared times 17. Now, as always, I desperately hope the reason something works makes sense. But at the very least, you have to be able to do it. So, does somebody remember how to tell how long the list of factors would be? How many factors would this have? Yes? Um, so basically, words, uh, you have the two squared, but there's three yes. options, so you have zero, one, and two, and then you have 17 with just one, so you have zero and one, and so then you combine that to see how long So three goes. times three. two. Three options yeah. times two options. Yeah, so it's always Six. one more than each power. And again, it's just all about combining shit, yes? So real quick, watch, watch, watch. Okay, so this will be, there's, so if I made a list of all the factors of 68, there would be six things in it. So are you with me? You guys remember that? Okay. Okay. And what's the square root of 68? So it would be eight. Just eight something, right? So yeah. around eight would be the turning point. And I think that's where I really got more of you to be like, okay, that's kind of cool. So I start listing the factors of eight. What goes into eight? One, two. I'm sorry. So what goes into sixty-eight? One, two, four. Four. Eight. Six. Six. One. Feels right. No. But I think eight now. What's really cool is right here. You can see four times seventeen, right? So this is the turning point. How many total am I going to have? Six. Oh, six. Aren't those three going to be paired with another number? So aren't I at the halfway point already? Yeah. So then it'll be 17, 34, 68. 17, 34, 68. 68 is a weird number, but I want to do it. Yes. figuring out how many factors it has is to make sure you get the list complete. So if you make a list and answer it based off the list size, you don't know if you got everybody. So the point of it is to help you make sure that the list is complete. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let's do another one. Yes, please. Does everybody got this here? Um, what about, let me show you here, what about, yeah, 56, I like 56. Take a moment and make a prime factor tree, I'll catch up to you.
Oh, what's up? So with the rule for 11, could it be um, 10 times n plus 1 times n? Wait, are you trying to come up with the rule for 11? Is yeah. what you're saying? You, uh, what does n mean? Just the number. So whatever number I give you, you multiply by 10? Then plus Oh, I see. I, I, I think I see what you're trying to do. And that wouldn't quite work the way you're hoping. Yeah. So, what did you guys do first here? Two times twenty-eight. Sure. I would do. I'll do this. Seven times eight. Ah. And then eight is two times two times two. So whatever you did, you should have ended up here. Yeah. Okay. I like. So our sort of thing of us is like biologists, and we're taking this. Uh, organic tissue sample, and we're breaking it down to its components. I don't care if you break it down in a different way than me, we're going to end up at the same place. Yeah. What's a nice, concise way to write this? Two times the I like it. I messed up. What happened? So, what'd you do? Sorry, man. What'd you do? I went uh, 56, 28 times 2. 28 times 2. Is that okay to always start that way? Yeah, of course. Okay. You can start whatever the way it is correct. All right. You can start. Uh, so what's 28? And then uh, four two, 14 times 2. 14 times 2. And then 7 times 2. 7 times 2. So how many 2's did you get? Uh, 3. 3. Same as me. How many 7's did you get? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you're good. See? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what your first step is. Remember, it's just like we both start with exactly the same color. And we tear it down to its parts. We're going to end up with the same parts, right? Yeah. And since multiplication is, I uh, I wrote seven times two to the third. That's okay, or just yeah, of course. Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then, how many factors would I expect? Four times two. I expect eight factors. Let me see if you guys are cool with this. There's one type of number that will have an odd number of factors. Yeah, one. No, not even. Yeah. Yeah. Anything with a square root. Yeah, any square number. Right. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. All right. I love that. Thirty-six. Second. Thirty-six. Yeah. Well, thirty-six. So real quick, thirty-six. We did this the other day, right? Well. Uh, one, two, three, four, six. six. And that's six times six, correct? Yeah. So I'm going to end up with four, eight, nine. Nine factors, correct? You guys remember this? Factor and factor. All right. Yeah. Just kidding. All right. Um, so let's make the, the list for 56. Do we have to do it both ways? What do you mean? Like um, the one, two, four, seven, two. Like I just find it easier to do the four times two to figure out what the answer is. Oh no, no, no yeah, this is good. Okay. This is good. So I'm going to ask you how many factors should it have, and then I'm going to ask you part B, make a list of the factors. Okay. Right. So if I start to make a list of factors, what's the square root of fifty-six? Somewhere between. So in an eight, so when I reach about there, that should be about where I turn. So let's see, one, two, two four, four, seven, eight. eight. And that's exactly where I turn, yes? In between seven and eight. So now I can start doing eight, 14, 28, 56. And of course, my list is certainly eight. Long the way I predicted it to be long. Okay, good. I like it. Okay, so it should be enough. Let me give you this. I have the walls, I'll give it to you. I kind of want you to work on this by yourself first a little bit, and then we'll see about working with somebody else.
goes into A. The, yeah, we're gonna look at some videos. Huh? Us crazy ass nephew. <laughs> I understand. Well, you either start off crazy or you become crazy. That's all teachers, exactly. All right, guys, I'm going to catch up to you here. Um, Jeez. Oh, that would help. Maybe I can get away with that. All right, guys, help me out. On these kind of problems, it's not good enough to do like a specific example, but it's not a bad idea to do one. Like we talked about back in chapter one, if I put a number in for A that works, I can at least kind of investigate what the problem is talking about, especially if I'm not sure what the hell it's talking about. Can somebody give me a number A that would work for three and four? 12, right? So three goes into 12, four goes into 12. Does 12 go into 12? Yes. yes. But you see how it's not good enough to prove it because that's a specific example. But at least now I get a better feel. I'm like, okay, that's what the hell this is talking about. If there's a number that three and four both go into, does that mean that 12 must go into it? So what do you guys think? Yeah. 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 Must be, and that's that relatively prime thing we were talking about earlier, right? So any number you pick where three and four both go into it. And what does it mean? If I pick a number. Are you still recording? I'm sorry. Yes, I am. It's right here. Sorry. All right. All right. No, I appreciate it. I need somebody to, to, to keep me up on that. I love it. Now, let me see if you guys are cool with this. If, I, if there's a number that is divisible by three, doesn't mean that that number has a three in it. Three times something, yes? Yes. yes. It's also divisible by four, correct? So it's also got a four in it. Times something else. Are you guys understanding? Are you with? So if there's a number that's divisible by three and four, it's got a three in it, and it must have a four in it. Therefore, it must have a twelve in it. Say again. Twenty-four. Yeah, any multiple of twelve really. So if you try to create a number that three and four both go into, you cannot come up with something that twelve doesn't go into it. It's got to be multiples of twelve. Do you guys understand? So like 40, four goes into 40, does three go into 40? Yeah. No. 48, four goes into 48, and three goes into 48, 12 also goes into 48. So again, that's not good enough for a proof, but it's good enough to kind of get a feel for what's supposed to be happening. Yes? When, when it says, when we have a problem like that, we're not limited to the number 12, correct? Like 12 is not the highest or the only No. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, A could be whatever the hell. It could be 18 billion. And you're just asking if 12 would go into that. Eight. Yes, whatever that number is. Is it divisible by 12? If I know it's divisible by 3 or 4, is it necessarily divisible by 12? Yes, because it's got to have a 3 and it's got to have a 4. So why wouldn't it work if it was, oh, let's see, is it part B? Yeah. So what's the answer to part B? Yes. <laughs> Do you want to? So here's, you gotta be careful. All right, here's, if you wanna do it the same way I did it. So the number has to have a six in it, correct? Yeah. That means it automatically has a three in it already, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's why it doesn't work the same way. Does it have to be divisible by 18? No. I need you to understand. So this one, it has to have a three in it. It also has to have a four. Does it have a four yet? No, it just has a three, so it also has to have a four, correct? Yeah. This one, it has to have a six in it, correct? Mm -hmm. 
It also has to have a three. Well, it already has a three. Doesn't the six already have a three in it? Yeah. Okay, good. Another way to answer this kind of question is, so if they're not relatively prime, now do you understand why that idea is important? Are three and six relatively prime? No, because six has three in it. So there's a number that's divisible by both three and six. In fact, there's a really easy number that's divisible by both three and six that isn't divisible by 18. What's the smallest number that three and six both go into? Six. Six, even. Three goes into six, six goes into six. Does 18 go into six? No. Are you guys kind of with me? I need you to understand this. Six, six has a three in it, correct? Three times two. Does six have a six in it? Yes, six times one. So the six already has a three. It doesn't have to have another three. So why'd the first one work? Because if the number has to have a three and it has to have a four, it has to have both. Because three doesn't have four in it already, four doesn't have three in it. If the number has to have a six, it's already got a three. It doesn't need an 18. Now just to really make sure you guys understand, there are numbers that this is true where 18 does divide. For example, 18. This question is, does this necessarily have to be true? No. Let me stop for a minute. Yes? Is it okay if my thought process is strictly, are they relatively prime? No. Totally. Okay. That's the power of that idea. Like I just said a minute ago, relatively oh. prime. Oh. Are those relatively prime? No. So does it guarantee that the product of those things goes in? No. So why does the rule for six, why can I build it off of two and three? Because two and three are relatively prime. Why can I not build the rule for 12 off of two and six, for example? Because two and six are. But three and four are. So I can build the rule for 12 off of the rule. So if I had a number, let me see if you guys are cool with this. If I had a number where the last two digits were divisible by four and all the digits added up to be a multiple of three, it's divisible by 12. Because it works with three and it works with four. If I have a number that is even and three goes in, six works, three already goes in. It doesn't have to have an extra three. What's the only way to make an 18 if I have a six and an extra three? It doesn't have to have an extra three. It already has a three and a six. Yes? If that 18 was a 24, would the answer be yes? I guess no. Was, yeah, and again, you can tell from our. So another way to answer this kind of question is using a counter example. And that's basically if you let a equal twelve, like you guys were telling me, which works also. Three goes into twelve. Yes. Six goes into twelve. Does eighteen go into twelve? No. If I make it twenty-four, it still doesn't work, right? Okay, I like it. Yes. Yes. So if the first number goes into the second number, then that. Then they can't combine forces. Yes. Yes. These three doesn't go into four. Four doesn't go into three. They don't share anything at all, so they can combine forces. So listen, listen. If a number is divisible by three, that means it has a three in it. If a number is divisible by four, that means it has a four in it. If it's divisible by both of them, it's got to have a three and a four in it. So it's got to have a 12 in it. If a num number is divisible by six, it has to have a six in it. Is that number already divisible by three? Yeah. Does it have to have another three in it? No, it's already divisible by three. So there's no reason I should expect it to be divisible by 18. Okay. All right. Enough of that. Okay. So the idea of relatively prime makes those kind of questions really easy. Since 3 already lives in 6, it's kind of like comes with the 6. 3 doesn't live in 4. 4 doesn't live in 3. They can both happen. Yeah. Um, uh, something that you said the last lecture was that um, for relatively prime numbers, they only share a factor of one. Yes. Is that applicable to like any relatively prime number? Yeah, that's the definition of relatively oh. prime. Yes. Cool. What do you guys? Now this one kind of turns this thing around a bit, right? So two divides m. So that means m is divisible by two. Two goes into m. Three goes into n. Does six have to go into n times m? 
Yeah, and the one way to do this is if two divides m, that means that two times something, <laughs> two times something is m, correct? If three divides n, that means that three times something is n. Is that cool? Is everybody with me? You can immediately write that for any divisibility statement. So pretty cool. So for example, if I know A divides B, that means that there's a number A times yeah, X equals B. So look at this. What is M times N then? M times N. And what's 2x times 3y? What's 2x times 3y? 6xy. So does 6 have to divide it? Yeah, I can see it. It's right there. So another way to say this is, is 6 a factor of that? Yes? Is 6 a factor of this result? Yes. So this is true. Yes. So if m has 2 in it, and n has 3 in it, when you combine them, the result has 2 and 3 in it. So therefore, it's got a 6 in it. That's all it's saying. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure, because when I was doing it earlier, like, for example, I did like 32 as like the example, and that... For m? For m and m being 32, because if m... No, 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 that can't be true, because 3 doesn't go into 32. So whatever yeah, m, m is, m's got to be even. Is this cool? Yeah, so m's even, but then m... And it's got to be divisible by 3. Yeah, so if you combine the 3, oh, I see. 2 to be 32... I see. Divide that by 6. Guys, guys, guys. Okay, so this I'm means n times m. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like it. Pushing forward. So number two, I sort of just made a number up out of nowhere, forgetting I was going to be nice with eight, but too bad. Uh, why does two go in? Even. Even. Does three go in? Yeah, it adds up to 27. Adds up to 27. Which means also, what else goes in? Nine. Check. Adds up to 27. Also, also six. Oh, shit. It has the three and the two. Yeah, good. So two and three work, which means six works. What about four? Um, yes, because 96 is a multiple of four. Yes, 96 is a multiple of four. By the way, one quick way to tell if something's a multiple is four goes into 100. Therefore, four goes into any number that is four away from 100. It's a multiple of four away from 100. Therefore, four goes into 96 because mm -hmm. it's four below 100. That's going to become really useful when we start doing stuff like uh, reducing fractions. And trying to figure out what number goes in the vote. So there's a cool trick that you do. Yeah. I think it's just like I know that four goes into eighty. Beautiful. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll comment. So you can build. It's exactly the same idea, except you build instead of subtracting. So if you know that four goes into a number, and you want to know does it go into this other number, you can see well, are they a multiple of four apart? Yes. And then of course you're guaranteed four goes into vote. Kick ass. So four works because the last two are divisible by four. And of course, I'm going against my word, but too bad. What about eight? Sorry. I gave you 596, which is not exactly obvious, but no, eight does not work, no. What about five? I skipped five. That's a quick one, that's why I skipped it, yeah. And then nine, we already did, yeah. There you go, cool. So normally I'm not gonna ask you about 11, and I'm definitely not gonna ask you about seven. Poor little seven. All right, what about this one? How did somebody break this up at first? Two times 42, okay. Two times 21, three times seven. So what'd you end up with total? Two squared times three times seven, good. So each power you have to add one. Two times two, so I should end up with 12, good. So that's all I asked for. I didn't ask you to make the list.
If you did, where would the turning point be? Well, sure, but just before I even start making the list, I know it's going to be around 9. Yes? Because square root of 84 is about 9. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay. Now, I know we haven't talked about this yet. And apparently, I, I didn't care. So, <laughs> I just wanted to see what you already knew. And I'm not going to look at these unless you show it to me. So, what the hell? Um, I... Some of you guys lived through the experience just now about remembering this and getting the two confused. Factor means it's a part of the number. It's a component of the number. So it's a smaller number than what I see, of course, because I can break 12 and then 2 times 6 so forth, right? So factor means a piece of the number. It's going to be smaller. Uh, multiple. Can somebody please give me some multiples of 3? Yeah. So when I say least common multiple, that means the smallest number in the number. Sure. The smallest <laughs> number, they both multiply up to you. Yes, can I do? No, 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 no. The answer is at least 12. And these, so the, the least common multiple means the smallest number that they both multiply up to be. So let's go back to greatest common factor. How did you guys determine the answer? Do it again, sorry. No, no, no. That would be um, least common multiple. I'm talking about greatest common factor. How did you guys figure out the greatest common factor? I listed out all of the factors of 12. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Uh, where am I? At? 12. Yeah. Okay. And then you list out the factors of 20. Let me write it like this 1, 2, 4, 5, 20. 10. Good job, Jeff. Okay. So this, the. Biggest number that's in both sets. So this is kind of funny. This is one way to find the GCF is using the set method. So this is the set method, finding GCF. And this is kind of like what people kind of naturally gravitate towards doing. It kind of makes sense. What's the biggest part they have in common? Well, let me see what parts they got, right? Um, so four, I like it. And what did somebody do? Now, I already heard this in the back. A really smart idea is to take the bigger number and start going by counting by it. So you could do 20, 40, 60, and then you realize, oh, 12 goes into 60, right? You can also do 12 at the same time until you go a little crazy. There we go. So that's where they match up, right? So that's another, that again, that's a set method, right? Multiples for both. Or just take the bigger one and keep going until you get one that the other number goes into. And that's the least common multiple. That's the least common multiple. Because it would be really, it wouldn't make any sense for me to ask what's the greatest common multiple because the answer will always be infinity. Because I can just, how long can I keep going with the list? For damn ever, right? And it wouldn't make any sense to say um, least common factor that's always going to be one. Yeah. So those questions would make no sense. That's why it's always greatest common factor, least common multiple, right? Now, what kind of problem do you actually use least common multiple to solve it? Yes? Uh, fraction. Fractions. Of course, when you have a fraction, we call them LCDs. Lowest common denominator, right? So least common multiple is the same thing as lowest common denominator. You guys all agree? Maybe? And again, I know, I know. I need you to realize Chapter six is fractions. You didn't realize this yet, just to really ruin your day. <laughs> well, we got some really cool manipulators we're gonna play with with fractions, so we'll see if you agree with me or not. And if you don't, well then, it's yours, but we'll get through it. Um, okay, so let me talk about, a little bit about uh, LCM and GCF. I wanna give you a couple different ways to do them. Uh, and I think I am gonna let all of us out early, why not? 
Uh, I feel kind of bad though. Okay, we're a little behind where we need to be, but to be honest, I've built in some catch up time later anyway. So we'll be able to catch back up in case you were worried. Yeah. Since like the first grade, if all these years they were behind in this subject. It's really weird. So I gave you guys the homework sheet, correct? Yeah. So I, I love the fact, I always forget that I can talk to you about, this is something you're going to have to think about later. So I try to do my pacing. And every semester, it feels like I try to build in a little more room. And every semester, it's not enough. And I'm like, oh, God. So yes, I am behind in every class. But, uh, not by that much. So we're a little behind, but we have room in which we can catch up pretty easily. Um, okay, okay. So one way to get the GCF and the LCM, one way to use for both is the set method we just talked about. There's kind of a, a really kind of nifty way to do uh, LCM. Let me talk about it specifically real quick. So if I wanted to figure out the LCM of uh, 24 and um, something not so nice, let me think, uh, 52, sure. Okay. Let me show you something kind of cool. Can you prime factor tree 24 for me? So it'll be two cubed times three, is that cool? Okay. What about 52? So it'll be two squared times 13, correct? Now watch this, this is kind of cool. Um, here's an example of why it's a good thing I don't have kids. Um, think about this, you give bowls by anybody in here have kids? All right, you have more than one kid? Just one, okay. Anybody have more than one child? Yes, okay. Yes, okay. If you give your kids a bowl of ice cream to each, there has been a situation where one said, oh, they have more than me. All right, do you know this, right, right. <laughs> Now, I, I did, I, I have been kind of like a dad for a while. I've dated people with kids, but and that was always really fun. And I never did this, but I always joked that I would do this. So I gave the kids the, and then, yeah, what are they? I'm like, nobody gets in it. Yeah, yeah. Then, then I get tiny. Then I get nice and really bad. Um, so, how does that relate to this, dear God, Chef? There's one kid with some ice cream, there's another kid with some ice cream, right? And so we can think of it as ice cream and sprinkles and whatever the hell. So, did this kid not get something that that kid got. This kid got three twos and a three, and that kid got two twos and a 13. So did this kid not get, is he missing something that he's got? I'm not sure what's happening. 13. 13, right? Is that cool? So he's missing a 13. What about this kid? is missing a two and a three. So if I give each one of them what they're missing, do they become each other? Yes. yes, so that's another way to find. In fact, this is how I'm gonna show you how to do, in fact, maybe I'll do a problem like this anyway, right now. Um, yeah, I'm lost. Oh wait, what, what, what? what? I'm more lost of how you're allowed why you're allowed to do that. Oh, no, no, no. So I, in general, if I give you a number, you just can't multiply it. You go, oh, that's a nice number. I'm going to multiply that by four. You're not allowed to do that because yeah. now it's a different number. This is answering the question, what is the LCM? That's what this is doing. I'm not changing these numbers. I'm building the LCM. This is the smallest number they can both multiply up to be. Because this is the smallest amount of stuff I can give each of them to make them the same. So I'm gonna go back and redo that problem earlier just to show you, you get the same answer. So what is this? Let's see, this is eight times three is 24, times 13 is, <laughs> what is it? 
312. So 312 would be the LCM. So let me go back. Let's do the same process, but let's do it with, um, what was the number we just had a minute ago? Uh, uh, no, 12 and 20, I think, on the paper, right? We already figured this out. We got 60, correct? Okay, now watch. 12, I'm gonna to cut to the chase. It's two squared times three. Is that all right? Yeah. 20 is two squared times five. What is this one missing? That's missing a five. That's missing a five. And if I give this one, what's, he's missing a three, won't they both become this? Yes. And what is this? Four times five is 20 times three is? 60. Frickin' 60, of course okay, it is. So if I give each of them the exact amount they're missing compared to the other one, they will both become, they'll at least become a multiple. They'll both multiply up to be the same. Least common multiple means the smallest number they can both multiply up to be. So if I give each of them what they're missing relative to the other one, we sum them all. That's the idea. I didn't have to do this for this one. 60 was easy, I could see that. That was pretty easy. But would you want to do this method by making a list? 52, 104, I don't think so, yeah. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Here, okay. This is a little premature, but too bad. Um, so what if I had one over, <laughs> sorry, 42 <laughs> plus one over uh, 18? Now, very quickly, that is not 2 over 60, correct? No. And that's because fractions are just like uh, variables. They, they need like terms to be able to put them together. That's why I need the bottom the same. I have one 42s and one 18s. I can't put those together. They're not like terms. So here, if I break 42 down, what do I get? You yeah, 21 times 2, so then 2 times 3, 2 times 3, Jeff, 3 times 7 times 2. Is that all right? What about 18? 2 times 9, so 2 times 3 squared becomes 3. Okay. So my answer for LCD, same thing as LCM, just we call it because it's the denominator over there, denominator. it's got to have. Everything that's in both of these, right? So basically, I can just say, what is this guy missing that this guy has? All he's missing is a seven, correct? And this guy would be missing another three, correct? Mm -hmm. They would both become this, right? Mm -hmm. And what is that? Seven. Nine times seven, 63 mm -hmm. times two, 126. Now here's what's really cool. I gave him a seven to make it work, yes? So then I would multiply top and bottom by seven. I gave him another three to make it work. So I multiply top and bottom by three. You guys kind of with me? That is a guaranteed way to find the LCD every damn time. Yes? Okay, I got it. I can live all day on the reaction I just got, so I'm okay. No, no, you're, no, don't apologize for that. Yes? So, but like for this example, you could just, well, 1 over 42, you multiply that top and bottom by 18, and then the 18 top and bottom by Would that 18. be LCD? No. Okay, good, but there you go. Figure out how to, the answer you could do that, right? You could, you all day could, yes. Yes? And then, so since we have 10 over 126, would we reduce it? Oh, um... Yeah, 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 okay, I'm sorry. I didn't want to necessarily, yeah, so this would be three plus seven over 126, and then you would reduce it, yeah. Both are divisible by uh, two, so you get five over 63. All right, I don't want to live too long in fractions yet. That wasn't too bad, right? Have you guys ever seen that method to get the LCD? Kind of. Isn't it kind of cool? <laughs> I love the idea of if you know what each one of them have, you can then give the other one what they're missing. That's the whole idea of freaking LCD. 
How can I make them both become the same? Okay, maybe, maybe. For what? I feel like this would have been so much easier. Then what? Sorry. Then like anything that they taught me. Oh. I just realized what they're doing once you got to the end where it was like one time. Yes. You're, I'm sorry. You're all going to be much better. Don't forget, they might have shown this and you just forgot. No, they failed. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. So guys, last thing for today. I want to go back to uh, 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 GCF. So we just did a method to find LCM that was built off of a prime factor tree, correct? For GCF, we could do the same thing. So if I want to know the GCF of uh, 48 and uh, uh, 60, sure. Can you make a prime factor tree for me? I'm just going to cut to the chase. This will be 2 to the 4 times 3. You guys can kind of like check me if you want to. This will be uh, 2 squared times 3 times 5. Okay, so you can all kind of do that. I know you know how to make a prime factor tree. So here's how GCF would work. Can somebody remind me what the hell GCF means? So that's the biggest thing that they each have in them. So looking at both of them, how many twos do they both have? No, 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 no. They're not sharing shit. Just each one. So I, I like to call this the, the, the fair tax man. So I'm not going to take more than somebody can give. So this guy could give four twos, correct? But I'm not going to take four twos from everybody. I'm just going to take two twos. So they both share two twos. They both share a three, yes? Do they both share a five? No, so this is the GCF, 12. And just to check it, 12 times what is 48? Four, 12 times what is 60? 12 times what is 60? 12 times what is 60? Five. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I agree. Okay, that's enough. So there's a little bit left in 5 2 to do, and then we'll get into. First thing I'll do next time, because I had videos queued up, but we'll watch them next time. I'll show you some videos of kids doing some stuff. Well, especially when I told you we'd be leaving early. That's when people were like, let's do that. I totally forgot what GCF was. Oh, yeah? So, that's from Google. And then I also saw this. I don't really know what it means. That's what we just did. That's so what we just did. So, they both, they both have how many twos? What? They both have how many threes? What? Let me see it again. They both have how many... Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all they have. So two so times three is six. Multiply. They both have a two and a three. 